In Buddhism, we say nothing happens by accident. Here we all are, 58 of us and more, because Dagusatsu Zendo is noted on the screen, counted on the screen as one. And we are indeed all one in this mandala. To have DT Suzuki's 150th birthday celebrated on Mandala Day is what I mean by nothing happens by accident. It was largely due to the very diligent work of Daishin Pavel Vochasik that we were able to have this private screening of the film, which was made in 1960 uh, by NBC, National Broadcasting Company. And they made the film at the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston. In addition to Daishin's efforts, we also have many of our own Sangha members to thank for doing all the very difficult logistical technological work to bring this here today. Especially Myogen Connor Keenan. So I wanted to offer a few introductory remarks. As most of you know, the Zen Studies Society was established in 1956 to support the work of Dr. Suzuki, who had been teaching and writing on Zen Buddhism for Western audiences for quite a long time. Uh, when this film was made, it was almost 60 years since he had first come to the United States. And Dr. Suzuki had uh, really been renowned throughout the world when the ZSS was established to help him continue his work. He was traveling all over the world to lecture and participate in conferences. He had been teaching at Columbia University and three years before this film, he had retired and spent time in Cambridge, Massachusetts, which was led with what led him to be interviewed at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. And in 1959, at the end of 1959, he wrote a letter to the, uh, to Dr. Yamaoka, who was the secretary and treasurer of ZSS at the time. And he said, a number of books on Zen are being published in America and Europe. Unfortunately, none of them are authoritative. It is up to our society, the Zen Studies Society, to produce reliable works and supply the general public with materials which will help them to understand Zen properly. My remaining five years, I expect to live until I am 95, will be devoted to this kind of work. Dr. Suzuki turned 95 in 1965 and died in Tokyo in 1966. And on a personal note, I was reading essays in Zen Buddhism by Dr. Suzuki at Vassar College. I graduated in 1965 and in 1967, I started sitting at 
New York Zendo. In um, about 1960, let's see, 67. So in 1976, it was because of Houston Smith that my first husband and I came to Syracuse. And so the, in this mandala, we have D.T. Suzuki, who trained at Engakuji with Son Shaku, who was the first Zen priest to come to the West in 1893. It was D.T. Suzuki as a very young practitioner at Engakuji who translated the address that was given by Zoan Shaku Roshi at the World Parliament of Religions that year. And another Zen monk who was training at Engakuji was Yogen Senzaki. And when Houston interviewed Dr. Suzuki in this film in 1960, he himself had a background in training in many, many faiths, but spent eight weeks at a Zen temple, a Zen monastery in Japan. And his words to uh, Bill Moyers in an interview that he did with him about that experience, I think also are very interesting for those of us who have been training in Zen. He had been given the koan mu and was in his final week of those eight weeks and having a very rough time during session. He said, the second day before the end, I went storming in to the Roshi and I was ready to let him have it in an utter rage. And then our eyes met and he said, how is it going? The words sounded like a taunt to me. And I answered, terrible. And he said, you think you're going to get sick, don't you? And I yelled, yes, I think I'm going to get sick. My throat was closing in on me. I could hardly breathe. And then all of a sudden, in the most objective, quiet voice you can imagine, he said, what is sickness? What is health? Put them both aside and go forward. And hearing those words, Houston had quite an opening experience. And I mention this for two reasons. We are in the midst of a deadly pandemic. What is sickness? What is health? Put them both aside and go forward. And because Dr. Suzuki, although we set up the Zen Studies Society to support his scholarly work, was not merely a scholar. He was the embodiment of one who has indeed experienced that which cannot be put in words and was able at the same time to write more than a hundred books not merely academic presentations of Zen, but expressions of his own realized mind, the realized mind of the Buddha.
So with great happiness, I'm so happy here to say, let us watch this film of D.T. Suzuki and Houston Smith.